So everyone says GPT-5 is the best language model, but what does that translate to when you're trying to build apps using Cursor? Should we be using GPT-5, should we be using Gemini, or should we be using Claude when we're coding our apps? So let's just start off with analyzing GPT-5. Let's say I went into GPT-5 on ChatGPT and I said, what's the difference between RAM and ROM on a computer? You can see that it actually is incredibly quick at giving us a response. And this is one of the advantages of GPT-5 is when you're asking it something that it already knows or it's quite good at, it will just respond instantly. But then when you go ahead and ask it something a little bit more complicated, like for example, help me understand special relativity, it will go through a longer stage of thinking. Now this can be really, really useful if you're trying to build quite complicated apps or you're trying to do quite complicated tasks because GPT-5 has the ability to swap between essentially what is just the base level chat GPT all the way up to your high advanced thinking model variants like reasoning models like O3 or O4 mini, which is why when you come inside chat GPT, you can't see or select any of the other models anymore. It's basically just auto fast or thinking. The other thing that's really useful about GPT-5 is just the cost. It's incredibly quick when it knows the answer, but also it's one of the cheapest models out there for its level of intelligence. $1.25 for 1 million tokens in, $10 for 1 million tokens out, excluding cached input. So if we were to compare the cost of GPT-5 to Claude for Sonnet, for example, one of the best language models out there for coding, it actually is three times cheaper. For example, here you can see it's $3 per million input tokens, whereas ChatGPT-5 is $1.25 per 1 million input tokens. It's also a little bit cheaper for output tokens, $10 for 1 million tokens output GPT-5, and $15 per million tokens output with Claude for Sonnet. So if that's the case, why is it I prefer using something like Claude 4 Sonnet or Gemini 2.5 Pro instead of using GPT-5 to code my apps? Well, there's a lot that goes into it, but I think the best way of understanding this is going directly into Cursor. So I just came in and I'm actually using the product requirement doc strategy inside CodeSpring, where we generate detailed documentation for each of our features, give it to the AI and just tell it to build it. Now, this is a very, very quick and efficient way of building our apps. And if you want to see other tutorials on this, we've got loads of videos. But with this, I'm using GPT-5. And you'll notice that a lot large part of the time spent for this is just reading through loads of files and trying to understand what the code base is currently doing. Sometimes you can sit for a very long time for GPT-5 to think through a problem, which is really good if you've got a very complicated problem. And it would be amazing if it would just think through something for 15 minutes. You could go away, make a cup of coffee, come back, and it would just solve that problem for you and write the code perfectly. The trouble is the output doesn't seem to be significantly better than anything like Claude 4 Sonnet. And personally, I seem to get a better output from Claude 4 Sonnet. So in other words, there's actually a huge time cost from using something like GPT-5. Because sometimes you could be sitting here for 10 minutes while it codes something for you. And if at the end of it, it's not accurate, you've got to redo that and sit there for another 5, 10, 15 minutes while it could try and fix the problem. With no guarantee, the output is going to be any better than the first try. So I'll give you a live demonstration here. We're just going to go ahead and again, we're going to use the product requirement doc strategy using CodeSpring. And you can see it's just planning the next moves. It's thinking through things. And most language models like Claude 4 Sonnet, for example, would do exactly the same thing. You would have a large reasoning stage. But you can see it takes a long time for it through all of the files, plan what to do for each of those files, reading through all the documentation, and trying to work out how to build the feature. Now, obviously, because we've already planned out things like user journey and workflows for our features, and we've given GPT-5 requirement docs, it's going to give us a much more accurate result. But even just sitting here for the last 15, 20 seconds or so, you can see how much work GPT-5 is having to do to figure out how to build this stuff. And while this was really useful while GPT-5 was free, now, every single time it's reading one of those files or it's thinking a little bit longer or it's working through this problem, you are going to have to pay both in time and in cost to get it to solve that problem. And if there's no guarantee the output's gonna be much better than anything else, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So if we just stop this for a second, and we just swap the language model over to something like Claude 4 Sonnet, for example, and we send this through. So you can see it's also still going through a reasoning and thinking phase, but it's actually progressing much quicker. So it's already completed the first task, it's now moving on to the next task. Already generating commands, it's already starting to actually implement and write code. And this is one of the benefits of using something like Claude 4 Sonnet, is while it's able to do basically the same thing as GPT-5, it does have a little bit of a speed advantage. And in my personal experience, it seems to have a much more reliable outcome. But realistically, at the end of the day, when you're building apps with AI, you want to just get used to swapping between different language models because different language models will have different results. Let's say, for example, this app here that we're trying to build is a tool that will take any TikTok video, download it, transcribe it, and tell us the name of the song that's used in that video. This is a very useful tool for creators. Now, again, I did a video on this, a full tutorial, but 
inside CodeSpring, we actually planned out all of the individual features for our app. So let's say we wanted to build this feature here to convert MP4 files into MP3 files. Well, instead of us having to go ahead and write this information inside CodeSpring, we can just click this plus button and generate what's called a requirement doc, which makes it really, really easy for us to do. And then instead of us coming inside cursor and selecting a language model, telling it to build bit by bit, what we're essentially doing here is creating a massive prompt, which has condensed 30 to 50 of our individual prompts into one massive document to tell the AI exactly what we want to build and how we want to get it built. So when you're using something like this, realistically, the language model doesn't make a huge difference. GPT-5 and Claude 4 Sonnet are going to give you pretty much the same outcome. Now with Claude Falls Sonnet, if you're not using a requirement doc strategy, you tend to get a little bit more hallucinations. It tends to be a little bit more free in creating new files or adding features or changing things you didn't necessarily want to do. So you've got to be very specific in your prompts. That's why using something like this is really going to help. But then if we come back to this app here, this whole UI design was generated with GPT-5. And when I've actually used GPT-5, I tend to get a much more sharper, clearer, crisp design. It seems to be a lot nicer at just putting things together in the right places and just making everything look quite clean and professional. Whereas if I was to use something like Claude 4 Sonnet, again, it would do a pretty good job, which I've used, again, to design most of the UI inside this app here. You can see it does, again, a very good job, but it tends to be a little bit more heavy on creating gradients and colors and blurs and that sort of thing. So if you're not keen on that, GPT-5 is a lot sharper at avoiding that stuff. But if you want a little bit more of creative freedom in your designs, then you want to be using something like Claude 4 Sonnet. Now, obviously, if you're watching this video, you're probably a complete beginner and you're trying to work out how to get started and how to build your first app. So inside CodeSpring, if you grab a subscription, the link is down below. We actually have the CodeSpring Academy, which has got six different courses showing you how to build your first app with AI. My personal favorite is course number four, which is going to take you from an empty code base to building your first note taker app entirely with AI using cursor. And you're going to get that app deployed so you can send it to your friends and family. We're going to use CodeSpring to plan out and design the app that we're building, generating these requirement docs, giving them to the AI and getting it to build for us. I want you to think of CodeSpring as if a whiteboard, Miro, ChatGPT, GPT and Cursor all had a baby and it just made developing so much easier. You're also going to get access to the CodeSpring boilerplate template, which has already got user accounts set up, database already built, security baked in, and payments already integrated. So for example, this app here that we built the other day, which again, there's a full tutorial on this YouTube video, you can see it's already got user accounts set up. If we wanted to, we can go ahead and upgrade. There's also a website already built and you can see it's just incredibly quick and snappy. So when you build your features on top of this boilerplate, you don't need to worry about creating user accounts or any of those other things. They're already done for you, you can just build whatever you want. And when you're using CodeSpring to plan out your features, it understands the tech that's used currently inside that boilerplate. And these are all things that you need to learn when you're building with AI. When you have an existing code base, it makes it so much quicker and easier and cheaper to build on top of. We can quite literally get these requirement docs like this, tag them inside our chat, and just say, build me this feature. And because this requirement doc is designed on top of this template, which this app currently is built on, we're able to build features significantly quicker, much faster, with a lot less hallucinations. Now, currently, CodeSpring is £29 a month. If you would like to grab a subscription, the link is down below. If you want to see any more videos on AI coding, let us know down below in the comments.